Um, a lot of people are confused about the caucus process. I know there's one guy that probably knows a little bit about caucus process, right? I'm sure that there's one guy that knows it. Cliff Schechter. Cliff Schechter, my buddy, is here. Cliff, how are you, my friend? I'm doing damn well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm a little pissed off about the coverage of the Iowa caucus last night. And the reason why is because they're saying the shit this morning that I've been saying for months. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. But they just, they really, they always miss the mark. You know what I mean? They say they, I assume you mean the usual media. Yeah. Well, anyone, any, well, there's, there's, there's several different targets that I have. There is, there is the, the mainstream media, um, which, most mornings, if I'm going to listen to MSNBC, I'm going to listen to Joe Scarborough talk out his ass. I'm going to listen to that. And then all their commentators be honest, really be, I mean, not, not be spot on about it. But I, yeah. I don't know why. I mean, this will probably come back to haunt me, but I don't really care. I don't, I don't know why you would do that to yourself in the morning. Well, I uh, like to torture myself for years, for years, Cliff. I actually, and this is the reason why probably I'm I'm so spot on. Uh, about the right wing is because I listen to Rush Limbaugh almost every single day, three hours a day. I listen to Sean Hannity. Uh, and, and again, I would vehemently disagree with them. maybe be yelling and you, screaming at the radio. You may have brain damage from that. You realize it's like, possible. Think, that might be Rush Limbaugh. I think listening to, just listening to Rush Limbaugh uh, <laughs> raises your lipid level and causes CTE. It might, it might be, that a, might kind be of a hankering for Oxycontin too. So you should keep that in mind. <laughs> it, it's possible. It's possible. Now, um, I, you know, I'll say, cause I, to finish it off, I listened to, I mean, I just can't watch cable. I, I do. I, I put it on nights like last night for an hour or two mm -hmm. when I need election results. And then if, if, less than that. And that's even all I can take. So there'll be more watching it this year when there are nights, primary nights and election nights, whatever. But like, I can't, I just, I can't do regular cable news. I don't care. Lefty, right. I just, it, to me, it's all so dumb. Um, the right wing stuff. Yes. When I was a young pup and getting into this business, oh my God, I watched Hannity and Combs and O'Reilly every night and eventually went on both their shows and got Hannity to ban me because I called him an asshole. <laughs> well, um, he is an during, asshole. He is well, an asshole. So, I mean closing credits, uh, um, it, you know, well, I just was making fun of him and saying he was full of shit and, you know, I didn't use that word, but I, I was saying he was full. He was full of crap because I think it was actually. This is how long ago this was. I can take you back. It was Kerry versus uh, Bush, and he was calling Kerry a flip flopper because that was their lie on Kerry. And I started pointing out all the things that Bush changed his opinion on, and it got it got Hannity really mad that I had this like stream of consciousness. And I named about fifteen things that Bush had changed everything he ever believed on just suddenly. And, and so Hannity uh, got pissed and, you know, called me some sort of a name. And I called him a name. It was just during the closing. <laughs> and uh, he told his people I was banned from ever coming back on his show. Uh, I'm sure. I, I'm uh, sure. I, yeah, I'm sure you're broken up about it. I'm sure you're broken up about it. It, so still, let me hurts, ask you, man. it still hurts. Um, let me ask. Let me ask you something. And, and you, then I, I went on O'Reilly's show. Okay. And he grabbed my ass. So I'm kidding. Oh, well. He yeah. grabbed everybody's asses. Come on. That's a, oh, that's I shouldn't true. make jokes about that, though. That's true. He's an evil man. He Go is ahead. a piece of shit. And you know, News Nation loves him now. News Nation, this new, I don't know who they are, but they, they love him now. Him I'm and sure him they're and right Cuomo. Let's see, we don't know who well, they are. We don't know where their money comes from. They say dumb shit. Right. They're probably right. Away. Well, it, it's the, it's, it's the next Fox News because uh, News Nation is waiting for Fox News to fall. Here, here's what I want to ask you from last night. Um, and then I'll tell you my answer to this question. What what was the thing that surprised you the most about last night? What was the one thing that you were like, oh, okay, I didn't see that coming? Was there anything in particular? I'll admit that um, that frozen meatball DeSantis actually ended up pulling ahead and coming in second. Really? Um, I, I, I thought often in Iowa, you know, there's, in, at least in the past, there's been a great sort of divide, right? And there are people who were sort of hyped, but if they fail, they fail big. Right. Now, he did kind of fail big because Trump got like 51% of the vote or whatever. He still got his butt handed to him. He lived up there for however long, ignored his home state, didn't, you know, did not the, that, in a way, his ignoring his home state is probably better than his governing it. So you could, you could take that as a win. Maybe it's a win-win, but I was. I thought. I thought in the end that Nikki Haley would beat him. Um, I actually. I actually believe that Ron DeSantis would get second because he was running for president of Iowa. And normally, when you run for president of Iowa, then you normally come in first or second. I mean, that's that's yes, pretty. That's there's, pretty a, there's a corollary to that rule. It's mm -hmm. called 
the Ron DeSantis is personality. Yeah, well, quote, that right? is true. That is true. It's well, when, when you meet, when there's somebody who, by actually meeting them, you you want to vote for them exponentially less. I thought that that might be a situation where he went there to meet everybody, and honestly, like meeting him. I think I said the other day, you know, when he on Twitter was offering like, come up and be here with Ron DeSantis and meet me and do whatever. And I was like, I would rather watch flies fuck. That's pretty much how <laughs> I feel about. I, you know, there's, I honestly, there's I a lot of. George Carlin, I have to give credit. He there's there's, that, there's a lot of things in life, especially in politics, where I would rather watch flies fuck, but it's so important then I got to kind of leave the fly porn for later. You know, I, I, I do that on my own time. Sometimes you got to put the fly porn aside. <laughs> right. You got to put it. Yeah. Bit. Right. To pay attention to like, you know, the I country just was on, um, <laughs> I just was on Stephanie Miller's show. Who's a uh -huh. good friend. And um, she, uh, I got into the, the, I got into Trump's shark porn, you know, uh, yeah. because of uh, he wanted stormy, stormy Daniels to watch shark week with him. Cause he was so obsessed with it. And I took it all the way back to a joke from Friends. I don't know if you ever watched it. Where there's like, or where the late Matthew Perry, he's going to, uh, you know, he's going on these. His job is sending him to like Tulsa, right? Oklahoma, he's, yeah, right? and and she comes to visit him in surprise, and he's watching porn. He's watching oh, porn. So he, changes, he just hits anything on the channel, and it goes to the Shark Week channel. Right. She sees him with a big boner watching. And she Jacking off she's the figure out ways to turn him on with sharks. So. Right. So now I've discussed both shark porn and fly porn. Today. Right. Well, that's, great. that's a pretty impressive day. It, well, I mean, and it's it's just it's not where you're at. It's it's not even one o'clock yet. You haven't even probably had lunch. So you're doing pretty good. If I could discuss two various forms of non-human porn before lunch. Yeah, it's like that old army good commercial, shape. you know, well, before 9 a.m. I'm discussing <laughs> fly porn. I mean, we might get into some more porn before we break here. But here, here's here's the thing. It, here's the thing. It's nothing, nothing surprised me really in Iowa. Um, I figured it was gonna break the way it broke. I, I figured the the um the turnout was gonna be down because the enthusiasm behind Trump is is dismal. Uh, and like you said, DeSantis, no one gives a shit about that guy. Um the only people that give a shit about the Santas, the guys that give a shit about the Santas are the ones who fucking hate Trump. And Nikki Haley well, is so uncharismatic. You have to, you know, you have to actually, well, be right. paid, which makes me think there was a lot probably, of money spent in Iowa. No, I know. Which makes me think he's probably paying his wife. Cause I can't believe she really gives a shit about him. So <laughs> like anybody who likes DeSantis is being paid to like him. Well, you, so, do you, you know what? I actually, you know, that's not a bad narrative. I actually think that, um, Nick, it's actually, I think true. But yes, yeah, we'll keep it as a narrative too. I think I think Ron, the, right? Well, sometimes narrative is true. Sometimes it's it's just a, a glimmer of the truth. But I actually think that Ron DeSantis's wife, what's her name? Casey is that her name? Yes. Is that her name? She actually wants to be first lady more than he wants to be president. I, I like, think. Oh my kinda, god, she's like, oh yeah, she's like watched oh, yeah. all the old stuff. All the old JFK stuff. Oh, fuck she's, yeah. she's she is <laughs> wanting, wanting to be Jacqueline Bouvier <laughs> so desperately. She's like, like the white gloves. They actually match his white booties, so it's kind right. of a nice thing. Right. Well, I mean, you know, when you're when you're uh, dressing up uh, in cosplay for for being the first lady, it's good that your husband would match you. Um. um so and, and you know, of course, um, uh, you know, uh, Nikki Haley. Um, could you know she she didn't do as well as she wanted to do up there, um, but that's because she was wrong. She thought that that when she went up to, to Iowa, there'd be slaves ready to help her uh, right. work on her her campaign. Well, she what, what she doesn't know anything about slavery because that's not what the Civil War was about. So it she wasn't. So she, it wasn't right. about that. I, so I think she <laughs> thought it still existed, and she could actually find some slaves oh, to help in her fuck. campaign. And when she couldn't, it all it, it all fell through. And well, now we have to keep bringing this up. I'm sorry, I'll make jokes about it to do it, but she the, the, she can never live down the well. There was there were economic difficulties caused by a, a lack of industrial output and trade when blah, blah, blah. slavery, right? Was, you know. So in any case, we're gonna and and although I will say this one thing, as much as um, she seems to love the old Confederate slavery system, the interesting thing is people still perceive her as the moderate. Um, and in Republican parlance these days, that means um, you poop yourself once a day, right? Um, right. And but and you probably you know don't just push the nuclear codes for fun. Right. Um, but in any case, moderate, do, moderate. This is right. This is actually a, a fun point, and I think if you what I should have led with this when you said what was the most surprising thing mm -hmm. to me, the most surprising thing about last night was 
the exit polls that showed that 43% of Nikki Haley voters were open to voting for Joe Biden. Well, and, and again, this that is, is incredible when you think about, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but just people need to understand who don't get how white, like Iowa is like, <laughs> Iowa, as I, I I'm going to steal, I can't come up with something else. I'll Listen, I, I live in Iowa's basement. I live in Missouri. So I live okay. in Iowa's basement. So yes, I know exactly how white. You actually have people of color. Right. I, I know. I know. But I have family from Iowa, northern Missouri, which is basically Iowa. Like okay. it is. So I'll just say if it, to, to how I described it in the last show is I'm sorry to reuse a line, but Iowa is like cocaine on top of snow in Utah. White. Right. Is what we're talking about. And and so and then it is heavily those who turn out Republicans, very evangelical. So. Even obviously that population loves Trump more because they all believe in cults together. But the point is still that some of them, because it's such a heavy evangelical white population, some even white evangelicals, some white conservative Christians, whatever, whatever, must have come out and voted for Nikki Haley. And 43 percent of them are saying they're open to Joe Biden. And a well, third. Of, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that the, the, these, these are all good points. They're not surprising to me. I've been saying for a long time that, look, the enthusiasm for Trump is way down. This country fucking hates his guts. They don't want to listen to him. They don't want to hear him. And most of the country has disengaged in politics because of him and because yeah. of that. Because the one thing they don't want to do is get in a conversation in their white town in Iowa with another white cracker that looks like it walked out of a saltine package, right? And try to have a conversation with him about politics. Daniel. Huh? Your joke was better than mine. Yeah, Ron's well, and, 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 you know, the saltine cracker that wears a red MAGA hat, they don't really want to have a conversation with that person about politics. They'd much rather keep it light and white, you know, not, not having to fucking defend their political position in public. And really, that's the thing that I want to get to with the Iowa caucus, which I think a lot of people were discounting, including every single talking head and every single person in the media who thought Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley or Vivek Ramadama Ding Dong had a fucking chance. Here's how caucuses work. You get in a big fucking room, right? And everyone, it's obvious who you're going to fucking vote for. It is you're obvious. You're going to different groups. Right, right, yes. right. So you're not you going into a voting booth. Teams at, you know, at recess, it's like that. You're like, you're on Trump's team. You're on, you know, and you go to right. your different areas. Right. Now, I don't live in a caucus state, but I know how caucus works, right? right. And a lot of lefties online have been watching people uh, dump their their slip, their vote into paper bags and like, oh, my God. I'm like, how don't you know this, how caucuses work? They're in a spot where they're going to vote for that person. It's not a fucking secret. It's not a secret ballot. You're not mm. secretly voting. You're just sticking your slip of paper in that bag so they can count the slips instead of counting people because they want to count the slips that you wrote on. It's not complicated. It's it not be outlawed, by the way. I'm What's that? What's that? Oh my, I mean, caucus. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole thing about a caucus. First of all, it, in, a caucus in Iowa is the most ludicrous non-sample <laughs> of normal people. Like you might as you might as well get the people that cut off their own nuts and went up to the Halebop comet How you know, thing the and people the of Iowa. Solar, uh, <laughs> all right, like some cult like that. Let's start with that. Um, but but caucuses in general, as you just said. There, there, you have to be because you're not just going to vote, right? Like, I'm gonna go vote, which hope you hope most people do, right? You stand you in line, you prove you're, you're a voter, you go, you grab your you ballot, a dedicated asshole who's willing to hang out for hours trying to persuade other people to come over to your side. And I mean, so who is that? I'm not even willing to do that. So, I mean, it's like the smallest percentage of, of people, it's like. Hi, I'm a loser who has no interests whatsoever, but I'm really angry. So I think I'm going to go to a caucus, stand up for my guy, threaten other people and try to get them to join me. Right. Um, well, and that's the thing when you said threat, because the thing that I knew is that there's a lot of people who wanted a caucus for DeSantis and Haley that probably caucused for Trump. Mm -hmm. And the reason why and the reason why is because. MAGA sends bomb threats. They try to yep. shoot and kill you. They they are scared. They wake up to a burning cross on right. the lawn and right. a bunch of guys wearing pillow shoes. It's fucking Iowa, okay? It's Iowa. White people in Iowa don't have black people to be scared of. They have other fucking crazy ass white people to be scared of. And those crazy ass white people are the ones who are showing up to caucus. Right. Well, who are the craziest ones? Who are the most violent ones? The Trump right. people. 
Exactly. So they show up. They're the ones who are doing the most threatening. I'm not saying right. there aren't any among the other groups, but we know the the vast majority of them are most likely to be Trump people and people have to live in that community and they're scared. So they get peer pressured into doing this. So again, caucuses in general, in Iowa, it's even worse. All right. But in general, they are the stupid. I mean, they're look like town halls, real town halls, not the dumb things we do for TV, like old New England town halls where someone would come and, and, and you know, it's propose, actually answer questions, right? Yeah. Answer questions and propose ideas for legislation they might support in the legislature and actually seek people's, you know, input and that kind of thing. It's, it's something of a bygone age. We are a country of 330 million, 340 million people. Caucuses are fucking dumb. All right. You can do that <laughs> when you had like eight million people in the country, and and if you got a few thousand people there in your state of like you know fourteen thousand people, they might be representative of something. Maybe South Dakota is still small enough in population and large enough in sheep population that you could you could have a caucus and it might be representative. Or, well, or there were plenty of sheep that showed up last night. There were plenty of sheep, but not enough. The and, sheep. But most and, and places. What? It's not representative of anything. It's stupid. It is anti-democratic at its very core. Right. Well, and, and the other thing, too, about a, about a caucus is that when you have a low turnout, it does give an indicator of low enthusiasm. That's the one yeah. thing that you will guarantee with the caucus. A lot of people are like, oh, but the weather was really cold. I'm like, it's Iowa. It's <laughs> always fucking cold. What are you talking about? I They're used to being fucking cold. What are you talking about? Just because Matt Katz, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Jim Jordan went there and they were cold doesn't mean Iowans doesn't know what cold is. They knows what the cold is. They also, got if we're being honest, if you've seen both Jim Jordan's sort of head shape and Marjorie Taylor Greene's <laughs> spork feet, you know, that they both live in center earth. So when they come outside of center earth, it's freezing. Right. right. That's true. That's true. That is true. That is true. The deepest thought, depths I mean, of hell point, are a hell of a lot hotter than Iowa on any given day, no matter how cold it may be. Um, so I want to move on just a bit to the next primary, because we do have an actual primary that's going to happen uh, the next one. And uh, it's New Hampshire. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot and make you make predictions here. I'll tell you my predictions first. Uh, Trump will win New Hampshire. He will win New Hampshire uh, easily. It handily, Nikki Chaley, Haley does not have a chance in New Hampshire, and neither does Meatball Ron even come close to even fucking dunking on New Hampshire. Now, here's the good news that I want to tell you. The biggest chance in New Hampshire, Meatball Ron, is I think he's talked to fewer people there. Well, so, that, that is true. So they might not they might not know how weird he is. Is that what you're saying? There than he had <laughs> well, that that I, you know I didn't think about that, so that might surprise me. But here's the thing: is that Everyone is discounting, and the media at this morning when I was listening to Morning Joe, they said it over and over and over. He's somehow the incumbent. I've been saying this for months. I'm like, look, there's an incumbency built in. What do you think the big lie is? What do you think him continuing to say that I won, he lost, I won, he lost, is to make them believe that he won and they lost? And if you didn't look at what happened last night and go, well, the enthusiasm for Trump in overall is way down but the enthusiasm for Trump inside the MAGA cult is way up. Like, they love the guy. They want him to be king, dictator. They want to lick his balls, even as crazy as that might sound. That's what they want to do. But pretty freaking gross, I'll tell you that. My, my guess is he'll win New Hampshire. Do you think Nikki Haley has a chance in New Hampshire? Do I think she has a chance? But um, no, she's not going to win. Um, right. Look. The, the, the difference in New Hampshire, and this is important, independents are allowed to vote in either party right. primary. The Democrats don't have a real one because they have some weird woman looking at crystals uh, showing up there. And uh, and we've chosen to have more representative states than the two well, two very white states go first anyhow. Um, but, but so any independents there who want to make their voices heard are more likely to vote in the Republican primary, right? So they're going to vote in the Republican primary and they're more likely to pick Nikki Haley because she's, again, the pro-slavery moderate. So they're, <laughs> they're going to, they, but so I, I think, I think her, her pro-slavery position may hurt them a little bit among, among independents, but they still like her because they're moderates for Republicans. Right. So I think that, that in the end, I'll predict it again. Watch, I'll get it wrong again. I actually think she'll, that Trump will win. I think she will beat, beat out uh, 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 Meatball Ron. Uh, and come in second because of independence. Like McCain pulled an upset of, of Bush there because of all the independents or whatever. I mean, it was a different Republican Party then. 
still sucked, but a little less crazy. Um, but but I think in the end, I think she actually will come in second there. Uh, okay. She's harder there because she knows independents can vote. Uh, and I think Meatball Ron comes in third. And the only question at that point becomes, when does he drop his ass out? He probably thinks because he's Southern, he can hang on and maybe come in, come in second. You know, well, I don't know how he thinks he's coming in second in South Carolina. But I'll make the bigger prediction to, to, than this. Mm -hmm. Trump wins in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, Nikki Haley does the best she could possibly do and maybe only loses by 15 to 20 points. But then Trump goes down and beats her in her home state of South Carolina, just the way he beat Marco Rubio to a pulp Florida. and embarrassed the hell out of him in Florida by 20 something points or whatever. In the end, when when the, the core base in South Carolina is as right wing and racist and nutty. Remember Lee Atwater from down there. That's where when McCain won in, in New Hampshire. That's when they went and they, they did the whole black love child and all that stuff to, to, to help Bush win in South Carolina and get back on track to win. The, the stuff they will be saying about Nikki Haley is stuff that no other Republican has ever said about Nikki Haley before in concentrated doses. They will be called, I'm sure they'll be calling her an illegal immigrant. I'm sure they're, you know, illegal as that's their term, not mine, just to be clear. I'm sure they'll be saying all sorts of stuff like that. And, and I'm going to predict she will lose. And that is they will something. say her real name instead of Nikki. They'll that's be right, all they'll sorts call her of Nimrata, right. I don't remember the last name. And in the end, that is where Trump will put this thing away. Right. Well, so so that that is a that is a good prediction. Here's what I hope happens. I actually don't think this will happen. I hope, I, I I I predict that Trump will win by 15 or 20 in New Hampshire. Um, I think I think Nikki Haley uh, beats Ron very very easily. I'm hoping though that Ron is just a few points behind Nikki Haley. And the reason why I want Ron right up behind Nikki Haley is because I want Ron to go to South Carolina. I want him to go to South Carolina. I want him to keep spending Republican donors money. And I want him to spend as much as he possibly can fucking fathom that he can spend their money. Because folks, that's really the game here is that the Republican donors are, are going to get really sick of giving money to Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis for these, what you would call vanity campaigns as yeah. in they're, they're trying to get Trump but I hope that Ron, because if Ron DeSantis holds on to South Carolina and he can get very close or beat her in South Carolina some way, somehow, because Trump has been just destroying Nikki Haley, then that'll keep Ron DeSantis in until Super Tuesday. Um, and the reason why I want that is because I want Trump to have to spend a shitload of money on Super Tuesday. I want Ron DeSantis to have to spend a ton of money on, or on Super Tuesday or Nikki Haley, either one. I just want them to spend as much of their fucking campaign cash as they possibly can spend. That's all I want. That's all I want. Because well, Trump's going to be the things to, to, that I, uh, you know, thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. And and one is, I fully agree with you. Obviously, the more money that they waste on their feckless pursuits of the presidency, good. More right. Republican money wasted. Second thing is, Ron DeSantis is hilarious. I mean, I don't want him going. <laughs> right. Our content's gonna suck if he if if Ron I mean, DeSantis how boring goes, is this thing? You know, like, 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 he is unintentionally right. <laughs> that guy who went up and gave him the participation trophy. I mean, chef's kiss. Like I I want DeSantis in there because it's it's you just it's like I, I'm trying to think of how to describe it, man. It's it, you're you're. Just, it's like one of those characters that, you know, all the other mobsters pick on in a mob movie, you know, like Joey Numbnuts or something. And they're all just insulting him. And the minute he's sort of like, he's, he's sort of sitting there looking down and the moment he sort of speaks back, they just shoot him. You know what I mean? Like, like he's, he's just the loser of the group. He's only there because his, you know, his mom's the sister of the big mob leader. And like, they all know he's a total tool. And that's the way everybody acts towards DeSantis. And I want that to continue because I find it hilarious. Right. So, well, I mean, every every group of friends has the one friend that they have in their group, so that way they can laugh at them. You know, just don't be that friend, Ron. Right. Don't be that friend. But you oh. know, stay in the race, buddy, as long as you can. Spend that, spend that Harlan Hitler cash. Spend that. You know, I want Nikki Haley to spend all that Coke brother money. Just spend it, baby. Just spend, 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 spend. Uh, right. That way, there's less of it uh, when we come around because. I really think, and to end it here, I want to say that uh, I'm making a prediction that I think Joe, after seeing the result of last night, I'm, I'm satisfied. I've, I've heard, I've seen enough. Uh, Trump will win New Hampshire. He'll win South Carolina. He'll win every state on Super Tuesday. He will win the nomination, and he will lose. 
by more than 10 million votes in the general election. Uh, he will lose by more than 10, a margin of 10 million. Uh, it was fully, almost 8 million agree. last time, and it'd be more than 10 million. This it'd day. be fun to argue with you as we have fun doing it, but I right. fully agree. He's going to lose by 10 million votes, and I think in the end, also he will have been convic convicted of at least two crimes by then. I'm going to predict that. And uh, the, by the time the general comes around, and I think he will lose states that Republicans have started to count on. He'll lose Georgia and Arizona um, and Nevada and whatever. But I believe he's also going to lose at that point being a felon with one third of Iowa voters saying if he was found guilty of felonies that they would not vote for him. I think that's going to translate to the rest of the electorate. I think the seven points that, that Republicans have lost on average in elections since abortion was overturned is going to, and I think he's going to end up losing Texas. I think he's going to lose Florida. I think there's a good chance he's going to lose my home state here of Ohio. And hell, it may go far enough that Missouri's back in play, baby. Could uh, be. And wouldn't that be cool? And there's there's a lot of down ballot races that are super important for that enthusiasm, yeah. for that turnout, and for that unenthusiasm for Trump. Cliff, tell us where the audience can find you. Tell us where that way they can. The right. link's down below, but tell us where they can find you. Uh, best place at C Schechter, which is the YouTube channel uh, where we do fun videos like this, and you know, other fun videos that are slightly different than this. Uh, you can find me at Cliff Schechter on Twitter and at Cliff D. Schechter on threads. And I think those are the best spots. But as I always say, at C. Schechter on YouTube, because that's the one we're working on trying to grow. So, Well, thanks, the, the YouTube link is down below in the description. Go to YouTube, just type in Cliff Schechter. You'll get there or come to this video. Look at the description down below. Cliff, thanks for joining me. I, I know it's not Thursday, but I wanted you to join me to talk Iowa because- I couldn't laugh about Iowa today. What do we really have in our that's lives? That's right. That's right. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. Come, come back soon, my friend. We'll see you soon. Everyone stick around. We'll be right back right after.